everything? I hope so. Yes, it's a lengthy business. You must be tired. I'm so excited. I wish we could take the youngster right home with us. When do you think we can expect to get him? Oh, well, it's... A... Oh, just a minute. I'm afraid I forgot something. I have to sign these. These give us permission to check into every detail of your private life. <laughs> Does it, I think. I'm sorry to have kept you so long, but you understand that we must be most careful. After all, it's a child's life. Our investigation can't be too thorough. How long will it be? Well, it all depends. Matter of months, perhaps. But we'll keep you Thank posted. you very much. Uh, Eve, dear, we'll be late. <laughs> Goodbye, and please hurry. Goodbye. 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 of applicants, Harry and Eve Graham. She is 32, he's 38. Occupation, traveling salesman for the Sutter Sales Corporation, dealing in electrical appliances. The company is owned by the Grahams and was started about four years ago. Mrs. Graham appears to be very capable. She handles the office work. Mr. Graham covers the Los Angeles area where they hold a sales franchise for a deep freeze concern. Their income, presently about 20,000. Married, eight years. They, oh, you don't need to wait for me. I'll straighten up. Yeah, I tried that once before. I nearly lost my job. You and you are cleaning up. <laughs> well, go on, go on. You're not disturbing me one bit. Mrs. Graham is unable to have a family. Her problem is of undetermined origin. But we'll check several physicians who have examined her during the past eight years. They will take an older child, four or five years, of either sex. From a preliminary interview, it's my opinion they would make fit parents. But something bothers me about Mr. Graham. He seemed impatient during the interview. A chip on the shoulder sort of attitude. He he behaved rather strangely when signing the, uh, the permission to investigate form. Perhaps this is my imagination. I'll report further when I visit the Graham's home for the customary inspection next week. Whew. Well, that's that. If all the others was like you, there wouldn't be any babies given away in this state at all. Why are you such an old fuss budget, huh? If you had made a mistake once, you wouldn't want to ever let it happen again. Not where a child is involved. No. Well, goodbye, dearie. Uh, Eve Graham. Went to Sutter Street and Harry Graham. Oh, I couldn't resist him. 
He's the beginning of a collection. There's a whole army that goes with him. We haven't heard anything yet. Oh, but we will. You'll see. Mr. Jordan looks like Santa Claus. Just like a man who gives babies away. And anyway, it's good practice for you, being awakened by mechanical toys. On a teddy bear in the face. Maybe later on, a football in the tummy. Oh, you'll learn to love it. You will love it, won't you? Of course I will. Why do you ask? Oh, then it's just my imagination. The other day in Mr. Jordan's office, I thought maybe you were sorry we'd started the whole thing. I wasn't sorry. It's just that Santa Claus was such a deliberate old codger, he got on my nerves, that's all. How about undoing my blouse? How about getting yourself pulled together? This is Tom Morgan Saturday with us. You can do the Caesar salad. What else is cooking? Oh, everything you hate. Roast beef rare, potatoes brown. How does that sound, Master? Sounds like the perfect wife. Good in the office, great around the house. I wonder if it will like him. Well, if it doesn't, I'll keep it myself. I remember other Saturday afternoons, when it was always like this. A long time ago. It's a beautifully planned apartment. Yes, we think so. Mm. Oh, immaculate. You sure you won't have something? A Coke? Oh, uh, could I have a glass of milk instead? Please? Yes, surely, sir. Uh, thank you. My stomach, my work, all the tension. If you don't mind my saying so, Mr. Jordan, I think you take your work much too seriously. It's not worth it. I think it is. By the way, we've begun our investigation on you. Oh? How's it look? Everybody speaks very highly of you. But? I've been a salesman too long not to recognize sales resistance when I see it, Mr. Jordan. I have a feeling you don't want us to have the child. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Thank you. Well? Am I right? <laughs> I don't know whether I do or not. At least not yet. I understand you spend a great deal of time in Los Angeles, on business. Yes, that's right. Then perhaps you could give me the names of some of the people down there with whom you work. Oh, it's all routine, nothing more than that. You're very conscientious, aren't you, Mr. Jordan? Well, I'll drop you a line and refer you to lots of people in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. There's something else about me I think you should know. I have a small mole Hi. on my right shoulder. Would you like to see it? Oh, Mr. Jordan, I'm sorry I'm late. That's all right. I was early. What are you two doing in the kitchen? Mr. Jordan's been looking us over. I've seen your home. It's pleasant. Very pleasant indeed. W won't you stay for dinner? Oh, thanks. I can't. I have to get back to the office. Lots more paperwork to do there. I'll see you to the door. Oh, thank you. Goodbye, Mr. Ray. Thank, thank you, Mrs. Van. Thank you. Between you two. Oh, I'm sorry, Eve. I don't know what hit me. Sorry? He said he liked you, but didn't think you liked him. Oh? Anything else? That we could start fixing up that room, and he thought I'd be a good mother. Hmm. For once, Mr. Jordan is right. Well, the star salesman of the Sutter Corporation had better get on his horse. What time's your plane? 9.15. I've got a date with the Clark Company by first thing in the morning. If we can only sell that account. By the time you're a father, just think you can hire one salesman or even two the way things are going, and you can stay home and... Run the show. What's this? Are you resigning? Well, not exactly. I'll be around to heckle a bit. <laughs> That's a woman's privilege. Well, I've got to pack. Oh, I'll do it for you, but there's not much to pack. Everything's in Los Angeles. Don't you ever get a hole in your sock? And how do the buttons manage to stay on your shirts? Oh. You never bring them home. I've uh, found a laundry that does it. Saves a lot of trouble. <laughs> I'll only be a minute packing your bag. <laughs> Oh, yes. 
I know Harry Graham very well. Like him. He handled our product for several years until... Until what? Oh, we didn't fire him, if that's what you're getting at. He fired us. Got a better deal. I see. I'd give my shirt to get Graham back. And you can tell him I said so. Thank you. Thank you very much. You see, the Grahams wish to adopt a child, and we must have certain information. Well, isn't that nice? They want to adopt a baby. How long has Mr. Graham made his office here? Oh, I guess about two years. Where does he live when he's in Los Angeles? I guess he just lives around, hotels, motels, wherever he can get in. It's cocktail time, honey. Are you with me? Mr. Jordan, this is Roy Esterly. Oh, I'm very pleased to meet you. What line are you in? Mr. Jordan is getting some information on Harry Graham. Oh, Harry's not in any trouble. Mr. Jordan's not a cop. I'll tell you later. Okay, sweetie. You fill him in on Mr. Exclusive, and uh, when you get through, come on back and have a little shot with me, huh? Uh, excuse me, but could I ask you a few questions? Why, sure, sure. Fire away. What do you know of Mr. Graham? Oh, he's a good guy. But you called him Mr. Exclusive. Oh, well, I was kind of kidding, I guess. See, we never see him except here in the office, and, of course, when he's here, he's buried in work. You know, I can't understand how a guy can live without a little social life. So he's not a playboy, like some cornballs I could mention. Playboy? He's the original invisible man. You never see him anywhere. He's not at the hotels, restaurants, nightclubs. Man comes to town and just like that, he disappears. Mr. Jordan, I have an idea. I'm sure Harry will be calling in. You can get everything you want right from him. I'll call the hotels for you. Why don't you just sit over there at Harry's desk? Well, thank you, miss. Maybe I should see Mr. Graham after all. Yes, I'll wait. Oh, as long as you're going to all the trouble, would you kindly ask the hotel people when Mr. Graham was last registered? Surely, I could do that. Uh, say, Mr. Jordan, uh, your throat must get pretty dry asking all those questions. How about a little slug? Oh, oh you're very kind of you, but no thanks. Bob Vance never called, did he? No. That's good, because I don't want to talk to him. Hello? No, he's in Redlands. He'll be back the day after tomorrow. Yes, I'll have him call you. Harrison Graham. Harry Graham. Harrison Graham. Good night. You've really got Harry Graham on your mind. I'm sorry it took so long, but the hotel's had a check. You know, it's funny, but he hasn't registered any of them for months. Several of them remember him. Of course, he could be staying at a rooming house, but that doesn't sound like him. He likes everything nice. You're very kind. I'm sorry for all the trouble I... Oh, the way, is Mr. Graham known by any other name than Harry? No, his name is Harry. Look, Mr. Jordan, he was in yesterday, and I know I'll be hearing from him soon. Give me a number, and I'll have him call you. Or maybe you've gotten everything you need, huh? No, not yet. Excuse me. It's that board. Oh, thank you. Graham. Harrison. Harrison Graham. 132 Brinkman. <laughs> Good evening. Hello. Aren't you a little off your beat? 
Well, I was coming to Los Angeles anyway for a meeting tomorrow. I'm reading a paper at a welfare convention. Oh, how nice. So while I was here, I've been doing a little checking up on you. Tell me, why are you listed in the telephone book under Harrison Graham? Harrison Graham's my real name. Oh, you changed it? Some time ago. I thought it sounded a little formal, if you know what I mean. Yeah, but in San Francisco, you're listed as Harry. The phone company got it mixed up. Look, I'm dead on my feet. I, I just got home from work a couple of hours ago. I suppose we meet for lunch tomorrow. Maybe we can learn to get along. Well, I'm busy tomorrow, but I'm sorry I bothered you. But after all, it is my job. It's, I understand. Yeah. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Tell them to go. You wake them both up. My wife's sick, too. She's in the other room asleep. She's been up with the baby two nights in a row. How long has this double life of yours been going on? About eight months. And you tried to adopt a child. What are you going to do? Call the police. You can't. Not now. Not with her like this. Please, I've got to try to make you understand. Please. I can't believe it. I can't. It's... How could a man like you, successful, admired, get into a position as... As vile as this. How? I don't know. I don't know how. Loneliness, I guess. Have you ever spent half your life living in hotel rooms, eating in restaurants with, with only a newspaper for company, walking the streets, looking for a movie you haven't seen? Well, that's the way it was one Sunday afternoon. I was stuck in Los Angeles. Couldn't get home to spend the weekend with Eve. I called her, but we didn't talk about us. She was in one of her executive moods, career woman. You've never seen her that way. She's different now. Anyway, when I got off the phone, I was twice as lonely. I felt as if the walls of the hotel room were closing in on me. So I decided to go out for a walk. Some men on the road escaped their loneliness with women who were easy to get. But that didn't work with me. In all the years of my marriage, I never looked at another woman. 
Eve was my whole life. Yet, sometimes in those years, I felt a distance between us which was more than miles. When we found out we couldn't have children, Eve was bitter, restless. It was my idea coming into the business. She caught on fast. So fast, she doubled our sales in no time. And our marriage, well, it became a business partnership. So on that particular Sunday, my aloneness was like a pain. Visit that fabulous Beverly Hills. It's only $3.25 of food and tax. And we'll give you something to talk about when you get back to your hometown. Hey, our folks, the tour is just about ready to leave. See the homes of all the Hollywood's greatest movie stars. Visit that fabulous Beverly Hills. It's only $3.25 including tax. It'll give you something to talk about when you get back to your hometown. I liked movies, though I really didn't care where Clark Cable lived. But here were people going someplace, and I went along with them. Hey, I'm... Ladies and gentlemen, this is glamorous Beverly Hills. Here are the most beautiful homes in the world where your favorite stars of screen live and play. Over there is the home of a woman who knows Hollywood best, a lady who shares her secrets with millions, Luella Parsons. On your right is the home of that shy and modest man, Harvey's friend and yours, Jimmy Stewart. Now take a look on your left, and you'll see the home of that funny, funny man, Jack the Miser Benny. Behind that big hedge over there lives a little man who is Santa Claus to the whole world, Edmund Gwen. Remember Miracle on 34th Street? Oh, that was a wonderful picture. Did you see it? Uh -uh. You missed something. <laughs> I'd like to know where my favorite mule, Francis, lives. <laughs> What's that? Oh, excuse me. That's all right. Haven't you any interest in how the other half lives? No, not particularly. I'm just crazy about bus rides. It gives me a chance to get off my feet. And here is a home of a man who's good with the jokes and a genius at the piano, Oscar Levant. Well, I heard him play a Gershwin concert once. He was just great. What is this, the story of your life? Are you wondering where our glamour girls are? All right, here's your answer. On the right, you see the home of that fine actress, Barbara Stanwyck. The White House, also on the right, is where lovely Jane Wyman lives. You know, you just like me for my lighter, that's all. I could give up smoking. Thanks. Don't mention it. If this is a sample of your work, you're not very good at pickups. I know. I haven't had very much experience at it. This is the first time I ever tried to pick up a pair. Oh, gee, that's too bad. I should be better at it. How's that? Well, I'm one of those terrible fellows that frightens the farmer's daughter, you know. I'm a traveling salesman, only a kind of backwards one. <laughs> yeah, you could use a few tips, like, uh, I'm sad and lonely, just want someone to talk to. Don't know any nice girls in this great big town. How about a few laughs? You know, I wanted to say all those things to you just now, only on no level. Thanks, Coach. Do you mind if I sit here? Well, there's not much I can do about it. You're here. 
You know something? I was a farmer's daughter once. Really? Yeah. I don't know what it is, but you don't scare me at all. <laughs> Thanks for the use of the lighter. Bye. Oh, uh... Oh, just a minute. In case, uh, In case you ever need a deep freeze, my name's Harry Graham from San Francisco. Oh, well, that's nice. And uh, mine's Phyllis Martin from here. From here? This doesn't look like very good farmland. You told me you were a farmer's daughter. Yes, well, that was a long time ago. Oh. Thanks. Oops, doesn't work. Well, remember me to Jack Benny. And there's something else you should know about traveling salesmen. You kill me. They have very large expense accounts and frequently buy dinner for pretty girls they meet on buses. Well, I must say, your star's improving fast. But I'm afraid I can't. Sorry. I'm sorry, too. Yeah, well... Do you like Chinese cooking? Sure. Why? Have you changed your mind? I know a place that has the greatest water chestnuts in town. If you can stand water chestnuts. I'm mad about them. Let's go. All right. Early American Chinese. You're going to love it. Cozy little place, isn't it? Do we have to eat here? Oh, yes, it's a must. Now, why don't you relax and I'll be back in a few minutes, huh? Hi, Sam. Good evening, Miss Martin. Good evening, sir. Uh, will you take care of the gentleman for me? Right. Like this way, sir. I'll have a drink at the bar while I'm waiting for the lady. Good. Scotch and soda, please. Sir? Oh, thank you. Dinner's ready. Table's over there. Oh, no. What are we playing, charades? The outfit came with the job. I work here. I don't believe any of this. Well, the pain will wear off in a minute. Just follow me. Egg soup. Very healing. I ordered the rest of the dinner for you, too. Aren't you allowed to sit with the customers? Uh-uh. Maybe later. But go on, eat your soup. It's the only genuine Chinese dish we serve here. The guy who owns the place used to run a string of hot dog stands. His name's Hannigan. You sure you can't sit down? No, I can't. Try it. Mmm, tastes good. Say, um, where are all the people? Oh, Sundays are quiet, and all the rest of the week. How long have you been working here? About six months. I needed a job, and Hannigan needed someone to liven up the joint. You can see I've been a howling success. Ah, oh, come on, sit down, huh? No, I can't. Say, uh, when'd you say that farm was? I didn't. A little place called Pennsylvania. How'd you get all the way to Los Angeles? Well, I wanted to see the world. So you started with China, huh? That's right. You know something? Huh? They've never heard of chop suey in China. You don't say. That's right. It's the house specialty here. And the next course, if you can stand it. Well, this isn't as nice as Barbara's Tamwicks, but it's closer to my work. Lovely evening. It was nothing. Drop in again sometime. So long. You know, we've been together seven hours, and I still don't know a thing about you, except that you're the nicest stranger I ever met on a bus. Well, I don't know anything about you either. Let's leave it that way, huh? All right. I will tell you one thing about myself, though. What's that? On that bus this afternoon, I felt just as lonely as you did. 
You're better now. I guess all traveling salesmen aren't alike, huh? Some of us are quite harmless. Yeah, you're kind of special. Good night. I never expected to see Phyllis again. But I knew I'd remember this day when two strangers helped each other through a lonely Sunday. I felt good again, not very sleepy. We're ready with your call to San Francisco. Yes, thank you, operator. Eve? My, two calls in one day. Well, never mind, darling, this is deductible business. Monkey business. I cheated on you today. I thought you should be the first to know. Haven't you heard the wife is always the last to know? I'm serious, a beautiful brunette, all curves and soft shoulders. Oh, how wonderful. I hope you'll be very happy together. What kind of talk is that? Aren't you even jealous? You won't spoil my sleep one bit. You're mighty sure of me, aren't you? Mm, very sure of you, my darling. She wasn't really beautiful, just nice, kind of a funny little mouse. Don't you want to know how I made out? Oh, I forgot. I heard that Duff's may open three more retail outlets in Los Angeles County. Got a pencil handy? Better write down this name and address. Are you listening? Here it is. He's the merchandise manager. Yes, I'm listening, Eve. I've got it. I wish you were here with me right now. I didn't even touch her. Touch who? You know, the funny little mouse. <laughs> what a shame. Better luck next time. Harry, I got a special delivery from Mother today. Oh? What's the news? Well, father's quite ill. Nothing serious, I suppose, but I'm a little worried. I wouldn't worry, darling. I'm sure he'll be all right. Eve, I've got to make the rounds. I'll call you in a couple of days. Good night. Night. And in a couple of days, I did get home. Dead tired and a little bit sick of the deep freeze business. I only wanted a weekend with Eve. But she had other plans, big plans. Tom Morgan, our lawyer, was there. Carl Forbes. He was a buyer for the Redmond chain. I'd never been able to sell him. Then Eve decided she'd try the woman's touch. Why did you ever send your wife in to sell me? She packs quite a punch. Hadn't you heard? Eve's the brains, I'm the brawn. Oh, don't listen to him. I'm just Harry's little secretary trying to get along. I was afraid you'd ask me how the thing worked. Well, how does it work? Uh, would you like some more coffee? Oh, no, thanks. Now tell us all about the superior mechanical features. All right, but stop me if this gets too complicated for you. In the home size, there's a special condenser that eliminates the fan noise and the outside moisture. The single-phase motor is completely sealed, so it has greater efficiency. And we can prove to you in normal operations that our product will save you in electricity two and a half cents per hour. And the lid is counterbalanced. We just happen to have a model in the kitchen. And if you have your combination Phillips screwdriver handy, Mr. Forbes, I'd be happy to take the freezer apart for you. Any questions? <laughs> no, no questions. And no demonstration, please. I'm convinced. Uh, at least almost. Perhaps another little brandy? Uh, Harry, Mr. Forbes would like some more brandy. Harry. Oh, of course. I'm sorry. Tom? No, thanks. No more. How about a little poker? The evening's so nice, we might play on the terrace. Well, I'm afraid of you, but I'm game. Me too. Oh. Come on, Harry, let's have at it. You know, I think we're really on our way. I'm sure we got Forbes. It's the power of a woman for you. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. I'm so sleepy. Good night, darling. Eve, mm -hmm. I just figured something out. In the last month, we've been together six days and 14 hours, not counting when we're asleep. Doesn't make any sense. Did you hear me? Six days and 14 hours. Eve. 
leave. Let's go away tomorrow. Doesn't matter where. Just as long as we're together, huh? Of course we'll go away sometime, darling. We'll go to all those glamorous places that Holiday writes about. We'll do it for his cabin, too. Let's not wait, Eve. Our marriage is the only thing that really matters. I love our marriage. My dog. So I hit the road again. When I got back to Los Angeles, I found myself dropping into the Canton Cafe. One tea coming up, rice cakes, and your fortune free. Shall we go? The decorations are terrible, but the service is great. Oh, come on, sit down, huh? Just for once. You want me to lose my job? Uh -huh. What does it say? You will travel far. Well, that's right in the button for a traveling salesman. Here's another one. Uh huh. Money and fortune await you. That's better. And the last one. Uh -huh. Dance and the world dances with you. Wow. Things are warming up. Do you like to dance? I don't know. It's been a long time. Well, do you want to take a chance with me? All right. When you finish tonight, where will we go? Oh, why don't we stay here? It's so romantic. <laughs> You're a little character. <laughs> Miss Martin, oh. over there. Sorry. See you later. That night we danced. There were other evenings with Phyllis, too. We asked nothing of each other. I had never kissed her, never touched her. Just being together was enough. But all the time, I suppose we were fooling ourselves. Ready. Good night, Sam. Good, Good night. night. Good night. Thanks. Well? Phyllis, tomorrow's my birthday. Do you want to have dinner with me? Help me celebrate? I'd love to. And tomorrow's my day off. I'll pick you up at 7. Sure you haven't anything better to do? I'm sure. Okay. Phyllis. See you tomorrow, then, huh? It's seven. 